Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to see all of to see all of your bright and shiny faces in church this morning. Uh, my my phone says it's time for live church service here on this uh, wonderful Sunday morning of July um, 25th, and uh, so we're glad that you are all here in worship with us this morning. We have just a few announcements um, before we begin um, church. Um, so, do we have any slides for those? Oh, we do. Um, uh, so one of those is the main announcement is that in a few weeks on August 15th, we are going to have a, a, a luncheon here at the church and our own Ellen Sargent is uh, providing the food for that luncheon and uh, so you won't want to miss that. Um, we are having a luncheon and it's uh, sponsored by our, um, gosh, scholarship committee. I, my brain is still not quite working yet this morning. So our scholarship committee is putting together this luncheon to celebrate our scholarship um, recipients for this year. One of those is our own um, Adelaide Sorbo. And uh, so we are going to celebrate them and, um, and, and honor them at this luncheon. So we want you to mark your calendars um, and be prepared to stick around after church on the 15th of August and, uh, and be prepared to come out. We'll have lunch outside on the... Um, on the patio there out in the fresh air. And of course, because of COVID, that's why it's not a potluck and whatnot, because um, we want to make sure that we do it as, as safely as possible. So um, we will be having that on August 15th. So we're looking forward to that um, very much. So I hope that all of you will plan to be here for that Sunday and to stay afterwards for the lunch. Um, we are, Carol is going to take um, names, are you? Okay. So um, Carolyn is going to, Carol Spencer is going to take names, not because we um, are trying to restrict who could be there, but because we want to know how many, obviously, since we're making the food, um, they would like to know how many are coming. So you're all invited. We all, we want as many people there as possible, but we want to know how many are coming. So just uh, let Carol know um, whenever you know for sure that you can be there um, so that um, she will know how many to, how many are coming. All right. That's basically our big announcement for the day. Yay! It's summer. We just don't have a ton of announcements. Um, but um, we, we did want to make that announcement and make sure you were all aware of it. So but we're very excited that you are here this morning. And uh, we remember this morning, as every morning, that God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. All right. So we're going to invite you, as you are able and feel comfortable, to stand and uh, we'll join together in singing our opening gathering songs. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Oh, 
Please join with me in our call to worship. Come rest your spirits in the Lord. We come hungry and thirsting for God's word. This is a place of peace and hope where all may be fed and healed. Bring us to the time of healing. Come, place your trust in God who is always near you. Open our hearts, Lord, to hear your word and feel your presence. Amen. Amen. Please join us in singing, Be Thou My Vision. join with me in our opening prayer. Holy, Holy One, one we, we bow our, our hearts before, before you this day. day. Strengthen Great us in our innermost being and, and dwell in our hearts through faith. faith. May, May we, we be rooted and grounded in Christ, whose love is beyond all knowledge. Help us comprehend even the smallest part of the beautiful mystery of your grace. Grant that we may experience the fullness of your presence with us. Amen. The enemy roars like a roaring lion, waking for the sleeping, looking for the sleeping. And when he comes here, let him find us keeping our promises, holding to faithfulness. Down on our knees, our soothing, watch and pray. No one knows the moment. No one knows the hour or the day. Watch and pray. Here you see him coming, coming in the clouds in white array to take his bride away. The king will appear with a shout of glory. Glory the earth awaking, all the earth awaking. Until he comes, let us keep on taking the highest ground, listening for the sound. Down on our knees, our soothing. Watch and pray, no one knows the moment. No one knows the hour or the day. Watch and pray. Here you see him coming, coming in the 
Scripture reading today is from John 6, verses 16 through 21. I'd rather read it out of, out of the Bible here. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and then started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because of a strong wind was blowing. When they had rode about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near their boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land towards which they were going. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thank be to God. God. When I first came to this church 20 years ago, okay, it wasn't quite 20 years ago, I did a series based on the windows in this church, and I thought as we return to this place, wouldn't it be great to do a series based on the windows of this church? Because here we are again, and we get to see all these beautiful windows that were handmade by the members of this church. And that's exactly what we're doing. But it might be a little confusing to you today because the window that I chose for today's scripture has nothing to do with Jesus walking on the water. It is the window of Jesus as the shepherd. That sounds a little confusing, doesn't it? So what is... Yeah, exactly, that's right. So what does... A boat trip have to do with Jesus and the sheep. That's what you should all be thinking right now. What do these two things have in common? Think about it. As the evening approached and the disciples were there in the boat and they were traveling across, and all of a sudden they saw someone, something, floating, as if it were, across the water. And they were terrified. And as it got, that thing got closer, they realized it was Jesus. And they said, get in the boat. Okay, it doesn't quite read that way, but I'm sure that's kind of how they approached it, right? Get in the boat. What are you doing? And as they said that, the boat reached the other side. Now, I don't know about you, but all these guys were fishermen. How did they not know that they were within a few feet or, you know, within a few dozen feet of the other side of the lake? There's a lot of mystery in this, in this story, a lot of anxiety in this story. 
on the part of the disciples. Now, if, if we were doing this window, you would think you would have heard something more like this scripture, right? What do you think? If a shepherd had a hundred sheep and one of them had gone astray, does he not leave the 99 on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? Have you heard that scripture before? Does that sound familiar? Now, yeah, that's Matthew 18, 12. That's a little bit different scripture, but that sounds familiar, right? Well, I'm going to explain to you how these two scriptures are very much the same scripture and talk about the same ideas. But I have a question for you. Are these two scriptures about comfort or anxiety? Are these two scriptures about comfort or anxiety? What do you think? Uh, anxiety. anxiety? Okay. I think that's a good answer. I don't think there's necessarily a wrong answer. I think it depends on who you are in the story. I think if you're that one sheep who is lost, there's some comfort knowing that Jesus is coming after you. I think if you're to the disciples in the boat and you finally realize that it is Jesus who is walking on the water, there is some comfort in knowing that it is Jesus, this guy you've been following, is walking on water. And maybe you've made the right choice in who you're following. But there's also quite a bit of anxiety. There's the anxiety of the 99 who are left behind. There's the anxiety of the disciples as they see this strange figure coming at them across the water. How do we approach our lives? Do we see our lives and do we see our own stories in the midst of comfort or anxiety? We're doing a sermon series talking about the windows of this church, but what we're really talking about is how do we see our lives? What perspective do we take on our lives? Do we see our lives through our own eyes, through the, our own perspectives, through our own experiences, or do we see them through God's eyes? Do we, see the, do we see the world through the way that God sees the world? Through which window do we choose to see the world? Through comfort? Through anxiety? Through comfort? Through sacrifice? See, there's a whole nother dichotomy, right? What does it mean to be comfortable? Because I like being comfortable. I don't know about you, but I like being comfortable. Sometimes it's hard to get comfortable. I get in my chair and I sit down at, and, you know, in the living room where I can watch TV and, and play on my computer. I don't, know, I don't know how many of you like to do both. Probably not very many of you, but I like to do both. And, but it's hard sometimes to get comfortable in my chair. Yesterday, I did a bunch of work where I was like this, doing some work, some electrical work, you know, and I'll tell you, after that, <clears throat> it was hard to get comfortable. In fact, still this morning, it's a little hard to get comfortable. But that's not the kind of comfortable I'm talking about. I like to be comfortable. But is that what we're really called to? Are we called to comfortable, to be comfortable all the time, or are we called to a little anxiety? Right? How many of us stand up when we are thinking about a new ministry for our church and we say, I don't know whether this is right, a good ministry or not, but as long as it makes me comfortable, I'm all for it.
Now, I don't think any of us would dare stand up and say that. But I think that, I think in many things in our lives, that's kind of the subtle behind, behind the doors thinking that we have. I'm willing to go along with whatever the group says as long as it makes me feel comfortable. As long as I'm comfortable with what the plan is and what the idea is. But what we should be asking, right, is, is this what God wants, right? Do you see the difference? We're, we're asking, how do we see the world? Do we see the world simply through our own eyes of what makes us comfortable or makes us anxious? Or are we seeing the world through God's eyes and through what makes God comfortable, perhaps, or anxious, or what God wants in the world around us? So we have to see beyond our own anxieties. We have to see beyond our, our own desire to be comfortable in order to open up these windows, in order to see more clearly the world around us, in order to see more clearly what God wants us to be doing in our own personal lives and as a church together. But it makes us uncomfortable. It can, for sure. It can make, make us anxious. But if you're feeling anxious, it means that you're alive. It means that you're doing something, and that's not a bad thing. Because I can tell you as a pastor that coming into a church that is not alive is much worse. Going and visiting a church and just seeing where they are just going through the rituals and where there's no passion, there's no energy, there's no vitality is worse than having anxiety. Churches that are alive, living churches, are constantly changing. Dead churches don't have to. There's no anxiety there. They don't have to change because there's nothing living. There's nothing growing. There's nothing changing. Living churches always exceed their income. Dead churches bring in more than they spend. We don't have that problem. <laughs> Living churches are intense and earnest about worship. Dead churches are apathetic. Living churches are filled with generosity. Dead churches are filled with scarcity. Living churches dream great dreams for God. Dead churches live in the past. Living churches plan for the future. Dead churches worship the past. Living churches never say can't. Dead churches say nothing but can't and no. There's a lot of comfort on the right side of that list. There's a lot of comfort in never changing anything. There's a comfort in everything always being the same. There's there's comfort in having more money than you spend and always having money there for a rainy day. There's comfort in worship being exactly the same every single time.
There's comfort in just reliving the past. There's comfort in saying no to anything new. Because then you don't have to change. But is that kind of comfort the kind of comfort that we want in our lives? You know, there's a, a lot of stories that, you, that they, we tell nowadays, especially on Facebook, about the 99 sheep. You know, Jesus leaves the 99 sheep and heads off looking for the one who is lost. And, you know, we all think of ourselves as that one lost sheep, right? Oh, thank goodness, I'm that one lost sheep, and thank goodness Jesus comes and finds me and saves me, and shoo. But more often than not, we are one of the 99. Going, where did Jesus go? We all got together, we're all here, we're all finally safe and sound, and then Jesus headed off again. Off to save somebody else. What about me? You see, that's that, what, you know, that idea of comfort, that idea of I want to feel comfort all the time. But we need that anxiety. In, in church leadership, we were, we were taught to keep everything just at a simmering boil. We're supposed to keep all of you guys simmering. <laughs> How am I doing? <laughs> Excellent, thank you. You've got to keep just enough energy and enough, you know, keep everybody on edge just enough that, that we keep some energy and everything moving and change happening. Because change is life, right? It's one of the definitions of being alive is changing. If you stop changing, you are no longer alive. And we need to keep changing. We need to keep growing. We need to keep trying new things. We will never find waves if we never cross an ocean or a sea. If we never let our boat leave the shore, we won't have to worry about waves too big or winds too strong, right? But what adventures will we miss? Because I can tell you, you know, they told us the story. They wrote down this story about Jesus walking across the water. Did they write that story down because it was the scariest moment of their lives? Or did they write that story down because it was one of the most awesome experiences of their lives? A little of both, right? It was super scary when they saw this figure coming across the water, and then it became one of the most awesome experiences of their lives when they realized it was Jesus walking across the water. And it was such an amazing, terrifying, but amazing experiences that they wrote it down in the, in the scriptures for us to read 2,000 years later. But had they stayed on the shore and, and never gone out into the water, they would have never experienced that story. And no one will ever get lost if we never leave the pen. If we stay right in the pen there in the barnyard, safe and sound in our, in our little fence, we'll, we'll, no one will ever get lost. But I don't know what kind of evangelism we'll be able to do if we, if we just stay right there in our own little barnyard and and never go out into the world.
the window of, of comfort models our mission. And our mission is to make disciples. And when our mission is to make disciples, we'll find ourselves venturing into uncharted waters and following the shepherd to new pastures on a continual basis. Our comfort will be at risk. Are you willing to risk your comfort? Are you willing to risk your comfort? Are you willing to risk your comfort? All right, you think about it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Please join us in singing, Open My Eyes That I May See. Please stand and join us in singing, Open My Eyes That I May See. We have come now to our time of sharing our joys and concerns. And we're going to begin, um, as we did last week, um, with Adelaide and Bernie. Um, um, they uh, are not able to be here again today. Adelaide had more tests um, yesterday and uh, was tired. She talked to me yesterday um, evening. And um, actually, I talked to Bernie yesterday afternoon. And um, so um, they just want to let us know that, that, sh that they would love to be here, um, but, um, but that she was just tired from the test that she had yesterday, and so they wouldn't be able to be here. So we want to lift up Adelaide um, in our prayers this morning um, uh, for her health. And so for Adelaide, we say, Lord, in your mercy. We want to lift up my dad. Um, who I left off the prayer concerns last week. Um, he went in um, to uh, get some tests. He's been feeling very tired. 
He's only 89. Um, and, uh, but um, they did some blood work and um, he had a, a really low uh, red blood count. And um, then after they did more blood work, they found that he had a really low white blood count. Um, so I asked my mother, what does he have left? Um, but she's a nurse, so we make jokes about stuff like that. Anyway, um, they have, a, have had an appointment to see the hematologist um, this week, and then the hematologist canceled it and uh, said, well, let's meet next week. So um, obviously not too critical, but uh, uh, so they're still now waiting a whole nother week um, for that appointment. And uh, so just keep my dad in prayers um, while they await uh, an appointment to find out what exactly is going on with all of that. So, My dad's name is Kenneth. So for Kenneth, we say, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Um, Jim and uh, Louise, uh, they um, are traveling this week. Um, so prayers for travel mercies for them um, as they um, head out and um, or, or get, as they get back from their trip. And um, luckily, their daughter Karen was able to go with them. Um, I know that that made Louise feel much better. Um, uh, Jim had another episode with his low blood sugar um, that they're still trying to diagnose what is causing that um, just before they went on their trip. So, um, and I guess uh, Louise is experiencing vertigo. Um, so, um, want to keep uh, both Louise and Jim in our in our prayers. Um, so um, for Jim and Louise, we say, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And uh, Louise uh, also lifted up her uh, brother and two sisters uh, who are all having health concerns, um, uh, but are doing, doing better than she expected. But we still want to lift up uh, Louise's brother and two sisters. Uh, so for her family, we say, Lord, in your mercy. Okay. Uh, Jim and Carol lifted up Mike and uh, Debbie. Uh, we've been praying for Mike uh, for us uh, for many months as his ALS uh, continues to progress. And, um, so, um, and uh, so we just want to continue to keep Mike in our prayers and Debbie and the whole family. Um, I know things are getting very, very rough at this point. And uh, so, so prayers for all of them. And uh, so for Mike and uh, all those who love him and care for him, we say, Lord, in your mercy. And also from Jim and Carol, prayers for Annie and Connie. Arnie. Arnie, sorry. That makes a whole difference. That's not Annie at all. Um, for Arnie and Connie, thank you. Uh, Arnie has a cancerous tumor on his spine and we'll check into UCSD Hospital tomorrow. So friends of yours. Um, okay, so we'll lift up um, Arnie and, um, and his wife Connie uh, in our prayers. So for Arnie, we say, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And um, from Kathy and Tommy, um, prayers for Tommy's dad uh, who fell and broke his hip a couple of weeks ago. Um, he is recovering in a rehab facility which is about to close um, due to COVID, um, prayers for a safe and speedy recovery for him. So for, for Tommy's dad, uh, we say, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And uh, prayers for Tim. He's wearing a mask and singing with a mask. Um, so he's got a little throat thing going on today. So um, uh, prayers for him and uh, healing and uh, recovery from that. So, um, so for Tim, we say, Lord, in your mercy. Yes, Jennifer. Oh, I did. <laughs> From Adelaide and Bernie, um, prayers for a new great grandson. They did put that on the prayer chain. Um, early on Thursday morning, on July 22nd, their grandson um, and his wife, Mike and Taylor, you left out some letters. Um, of Ramona um, welcomed their first baby, Dustin, who weighed nine pounds and 15 ounces. Yeah, happy to have that baby uh, delivered, I'm sure. So um, for, for, your, 
for uh, Mike and Taylor and for the new baby Dustin. We say, in times of joy, all right, great. It's always nice to have a joy added in there. Um, so for all of these uh, concerns and joy, um, let us lift them up in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we ask you to be present with those whom we've lifted up here this morning. Wrap your arms around them that they may feel your warmth, your comfort, and your care. Surround them with your Holy Spirit that all who visit and care for them may feel your presence. Be present, too, with all of those who are on our hearts, who are in our thoughts and prayers. And be present, too, with those who are not on anyone's prayer list, those who feel lost, alone, abandoned, and forgotten. Help us to see the world through your eyes. Help us to look beyond our own comfort. To wade out into the water. To move beyond the pack. To follow the shepherd. To risk our comfort. That we may bring your love, your compassion, and your healing to a world that so desperately needs these things. Help us to be your hands and your feet, to share your love in real and practical ways. Help us to be a light in a world that seems so filled with darkness. Help us to remember that you are not behind us, pushing us into the world, but the, that you are already in the world, calling us to yourself. That you are already in the hearts of those that we are looking for. Help us to remember that you are the God of all people, that you are the God of all creation, that we are all your children. Help us to remember these things as we remember the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We have come now to our time of celebrating our gifts, and once again we celebrate the many gifts that you have given um, throughout our time together with the generosity that we have, the way that we are generous as a church, 
and as individuals. Uh, we do have the box that is in the narthex there to collect offerings, um, whether they are just for today or whether they are your regular offerings and givings. Um, so we do invite you to drop those off either before church or on your way out. And uh, we thank you for, for being a, doing it that way and allowing us to, to take our offering that way um, for the time being um, while we're still dealing with all the COVID stuff. So we, think, we take this time to thank you and to celebrate in the giving that supports this church, the giving that supports this community, the giving that you do not only of your finances, but of God's love, of his compassion, of the way that you share in the joy and in the heart of God with one another. We celebrate that by standing together as you are able and singing together our hymn of praise, our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Please join with me in our offering prayer. Gracious Lord, you have lavished upon us the riches of your glory. Shelter us, care for us, and bring us safely to each stop on our journey. As you have given to us out of your abundance, we return our offering to you with praise and thanksgiving. In the name of the Savior, we pray. Amen. Please join us in our closing hymn, Step by Step. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Go forth now with God's light shining on the path before you, with Jesus beside you as a guide and friend, and the power of the Holy Spirit working within you to give you strength, courage, hope to go forth each and every day. Amen. <laughs>